so welcome to this session. What we are going to talk about today is um, not only what is coming in the future. Yes, of course, we will do this to let you know also what we are delivering. But we will also show you how you can streamline and optimize your end-to-end -end tests with SAP Cloud ALM. So let's dive in and yeah, keep the energy up as good as possible in this midday sleepiness, maybe you know this. And yeah, let's explore what you can achieve with the tool and its functions. Before we can dive, we need to learn swim. And I see also some new faces here in the room, so I want to catch a little bit you up in the topic about of test management. So I give you a short glimpse of what is already available in SAP Cloud ALM. And I will do this with this big picture, with objectives and capabilities. And if you have already worked in test management area, not only in the SAP environment, maybe also with other tools which are available on the market, you see we are doing exactly the same. We are doing design, orchestration, execution, and also reporting of test cases. But you see, this is on, on you see it on the right top corner. That's just a quarter of the truth. Yeah, SAP Cloud ALM can do so much more than just test management. But this is not a topic for today. Um, and even if it's the name SAP Cloud ALM, we are supporting also non-SAP environment with testing. And even if it is, say, SAP Cloud ALM, we are also supporting our on-premise customers and on-premise systems with test management. What you can see as well at the bottom of the screen is that we have a test automation API available where you are able to put in a test automation tool right into SAP Cloud ALM, um, for which we have several options available. But I come to this a little bit later. When you start with test management or any other functionality inside of SAP Cloud ALM, you cannot avoid going over the overview page. The overview page inside of Cloud ALM is a quite powerful environment which provides you all information about your projects as well as for test management. And even if you are not interested in all of this project stuff, yeah, like for example, you're a test manager, you just want to see what's going on with your test management, then you can just personalize this view hide exactly all the other tiles which are available there and just focus on the test management related stuff. And of course, you can also filter there. We have several different filter options. For example, also for text. Texts are quite powerful inside of Cloud ALM and I guess you have already learned, uh, learned this in the last couple of days. What I also like personally in SAP Cloud ALM is this forward navigation, yeah? So for example, as I told you, this overview page is a quite good starting point. You can directly come from this test case preparation tile that you can see on the left-hand side to an application, which we call test preparation app. Maybe you know this feeling when somebody has birthday, and you need to write a card or a message or something like that. You're sitting in front of your mobile phone and think, what to hell should I write? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, all the best to you. So sometimes it's hard to find this starting point. Yeah. Of course, now we have ChatGPT, so just put in, write me a text for the 80th birthday of my grandmother. So that's quite easy. In Cloud ALM, we have in future the AI generated test case generation, but until then, we have two different options that we could reuse to have this kind of starting point. One is we are reusing 
the information that we already have. And we have a lot of information already in um, cloud ALM. For example, here in the solution process flow. The solution process flow at the end describes a solution process flow. How surprising. Um, what you can reuse the business activities out of the solution process flow to create directly your test cases. So your business activities from the solution process flow will then be test activities inside of your test inside of your test case. And this could be reused then to yeah, describe more your test cases and a little bit more in detail. Good. The other point, the other option that you have is using the best practice content. Especially if you are using standard processes, it makes sense to also use standard test cases. Nevertheless, you are still able to adapt it into or for your own needs. So when we have then our test cases available, and this is a quite big difference to test management in Solution Manager. Who of you have used test management in Solution Manager? Wow, that's great. That's great, and maybe we will see for the Q&A session if this is really great. Um, but for, for the test planning area, the biggest difference here is, um, compared to, to Solution Manager, is that it's optional. The biggest advantage that we have out of this is that you can put your test case, say it's prepared and can directly do testing. Nevertheless, test planning is not only cumbersome, it could also have a lot of advantages. For example, if you have multiple test cycles that you need to cover, or multiple rollouts, or maybe you want to use also only a similar set of test cases several times, then a test plan is a good, a good um, function to use this. What you can do as well in test planning is assigning testers, for example. You have this dedicated execution context, which means you can have the same test case into several test plans, and you can have then different execution contexts, which means different statuses, different defects. Start and end date can be set for the test cases, as well as you have this embedded draft handling because if we are using these Fiori elements. I guess you have already heard about it. That means every change that you are doing inside of that environment are saved as a draft. And yeah, what happens to me some weeks ago, but um, I was quite happy that we had it because of my laptop was running out of battery. And I was quite happy that this draft handling is in place there and my test plan was saved. Test execution. We have also an own application for test execution, which was intended to be an application where the tester can directly navigate to, and it's not necessary that he's, he need some training into, that, into this. Therefore, he getting at the end a list of test cases, which are grouped by test plans, and we heard before, test plans are not necessary. Nevertheless, also these test cases are listed down there. And, and this is important for the next part of the presentation, the test cases are sorted by name. Remember this? I will ask later for it. The tester then inside of this area can search for test plans. He can use uh, the, the, the filter for using his own test cases where he is assigned for. Mm, currently, each tester can test everything, which makes, of course, also some sense when somebody is on leave or somebody uh, gets sick or something like that. Okay, what's also important, I did, didn't want to forget this, um, are the filter settings can be saved. This is a really important point that you can see at the bottom of the slide. Yeah, because of it could be 
yeah, a kind of um, nerve-wracking if you have to go to this application and always need to set the filters. Yeah, and this is very often used inside of uh, um, the cloud ALM tool is that you can save it as your own view to directly see your own test plans, your own test cases where you are assigned for and so on. Good. We have also a bunch of analytics available, very detailed, for example, this test execution analysis where you can see really on a test, test case level what is the status of the test cases, and not only on the test status level. Because of we have test actions in place. And it makes a big difference if you say we have only to test two test cases, or we have to test 70 test actions. Yeah, so whenever your manager comes over and asks you, why does testing take so long, you can say we have 70 test actions to test. We have also some more uh, reporting functionalities, um, as mentioned, overview pages available, the defects reporting that we have, and from my point of view, one of the most powerful reports are the traceability reports, because of I noticed already from my solution manager time, when we, we had it very often for, uh, for customers, that managers come and say, what is about process order to cache? Was it tested? Was it successfully tested? Who has tested this? And for this, you can use traceability reports, um, can do the forward navigation to directly see who is doing the test and when. So we have now talked a lot about how test management works. Now I want to give you a glimpse about test automation. Um, and here we are following the strategy that everybody is doing what he can do, what he can do best. That means test orchestration is done in SAP Cloud ALM. So what means you are preparing your test cases there, you're doing test planning, and you have also the test results at the end there. Test automation is done only on the automation provider side. That means the test cases are there, physically there, as well as the variants, as well as the flow, the test data which is used, and as well also the information about on which environment this automatic test case will be executed. One option that I want to present today, to be, which can be integrated into SAP Cloud ALM, is um, or are the solutions from Tricentis. We have also tomorrow in the morning um, a session from Alex and Matthias, where they are also talking a little bit about what Tricentis provides to you, which um, possibilities, which applications. Um, what you get on top of your enterprise support or SAP Cloud subscription is the so-called TTA tool. Also try to remember, I know it's a, the acronyms are sometimes <laughs> hard to remember, but it's TTA, Tricentis Test Automation, which is already included in most of your contracts, um, which could be used in terms of fair usage, which means you have some limitations, like you can use five uh, named users, you have 2.5 gigabyte of um, storage, you have 500 executions per month, and you can automate um, SAP UIs with this. If this is not enough for you, there are some more restrictions, but you can check out this on the um, saphelp.com page. What is this? But if this is not enough for you, you have still the possibility to upgrade with an additional license, which is then called STA, SAP Test Automation by Tricenters. And finally, we have an own test automation tool, which is for our customers, which are using SAP S4HANA Public Cloud, which is called TAT. Do you remember? TTA, TAT. I think you will learn it after a while. I did it as well. Test automation tool from S4HANA Cloud Public, which is quite nice because of if you have a public cloud, you are using standard processes, and then with this tool, you get out of the box predefined test automation scripts 
as well as you have some other advantages like this um, no-code approach for doing automation, also um, yeah, automatic post-upgrade tests which are running in background. So, we talked about diving and swimming, so I need to drink. <laughs> and what you get right now um, in Germany would be the Seepferdchen. So you are ready to be, um, or you can rescue yourself if somebody is asking to talk about test, or test management inside of Cloud ALM. So let's talk now about the main topic which we want to cover in this session, which is how to orchestrate end-to-end -end process test. So if you have already worked with Cloud ALM test management, you have maybe some challenges. And the big challenges are huge test cases. For example, if you have this end-to-end -end processes available in SAP Cloud ALM. So questions that you might ask yourself are how to design end-to-end -end processes in, in SAP Cloud ALM. How do, you, how do you have to create your test cases? And how can I handle that I have uh, several testers into just one test case in the so-called end-to-end tests? And for this, Rainer will show you a great demo afterwards. So I'm, I'm trying to finalize very quickly. So let's start. I just want to show you this, how it looks like on the slide, just to understand during the demo what is really behind. And we are starting inside of the process management, which is just one option. Yeah? We have for one process, end-to-end -end process lead to cache, several diagrams available. So what we can do out of the diagrams is we are creating for each diagram an own test case inside of the test preparation app. And when we have done this, we are taking over these test cases into our test plan, which could be a wave 280 end to end lead to cache test plan, and then we are assigning the testers to this. And for LTC4, and this is what our attentive participants today have already recognized, we have a naming convention here. And this naming convention makes a lot of sense during the demo, what Rainer is showing you. We had the acronym LTC, which stands for lead to cache, obviously, and a kind of numbering to represent the order of the test cases. So let's come to the test plan. So we are assigning the testers and during for our, for our first, not first, the fourth test case, we found out this cannot be done by one tester. So we have several testers which um, should execute this. And with the current um, functionalities inside of um, SAP Cloud ALM, you are doing the following. You are taking your fourth test case, just copy it, rename it to, for example, 4A and 4B, yeah, and scoping the test cases in that way that it fits to the tester who is later on testing that test case. And then you can also see here on the right-hand side, we have finally solved the problem with the two different testers for one test case. So this is how the concept works for if we have several diagrams in place. But does this also work if you have best practice test cases in place, Rainer? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Christina. Great session. Um, yes, so that was one example how to deal with end-to-end uh, -end uh, processes. Uh, also, like SAP provides best practice content for this lead to cache and some other processes. But the main concern customers has addressed to us is also we ship these best practice test cases and even those are beyond uh, LOBs, beyond functional areas and need to be tested by different people. And also that we, we want to cover with this session, even it's not always an end-to-end -end test, but a large test with many activities, many actions within the test need to be tested by different persons. And the idea here is also that we use the best practice content that we could download and import to Cloud ALM. And then we need to check, okay, 
which roles do we have in this testing? Are these roles also the roles that we have in the testing area? Or could maybe some of the roles that we have in the diagram be merged to maybe one person? So that's up to you. In this case, we have uh, used dedicated uh, uh, testers by each role in the diagram to be uh, complete. And so we also do a split of the test case we have imported, which is very large. Some of them have 100 activities, and even per activity, they have 10, 20, 50 actions. So it's difficult to manage. But it's still an advantage to have them in place. And therefore, we decided, OK, uh, with the current capabilities that we have in, uh, in Cloud ALM, how to deal with that in a kind of best practice mode. And that is a way that we can copy them and split them. And so we can then use them, import it, and assign it to a test plan, giving a meaningful naming convention. That is also important, like Christina outlined in, in the presentation. And that helps us to have some problems solved that we don't have the capabilities yet, like test sequences in a test plan will come later. And some other aspects we can solve with that. And with that, I want to go in the system or provide a demo to show how that really works in the system. So on slides, it looks always easy. But in the system, you might see uh, it's also not so difficult if you know how to do it. And as Christina also outlined, it's always good to start in the overview page to see what, is, what happens in the project. And there you have several options. So one option is you could customize your views. And here, I'm now interested in a test preparation activities where I have put all the tiles away that are not interested, so only in the test preparation area. And for test preparation, what is important? The processes you want to test. Therefore, here you see all the processes that are part of the project with the different scopes. You have the processes according to statuses. So some of them are in realization, some of them are in preparation, and some are already prepared. I want to focus on end-to-end -end processes, which I used as a scope. And so I only see these ones that I'm interested in, and I see one test case is still in preparation. And that's the one I have already imported from the best practice content but with the full scope, everything is win within one test case. How to deal with that? So I select the test case, have a quick look on how it looks like. So all the content, and you see, this is quite a huge test case. So you can scroll several pages. You have the structure with the solution activities inside, where you also see here, OK, some of the activities are additional information. Many customers complaining, uh, we always want to skip them. In test execution, there are much better ways to, to uh, avoid this. And therefore, um, I will provide you some ideas how you can deal with that. But before that is, if you want to get also an idea about the process itself, it's quite easy to navigate to the process. Then you see, OK. That's the advanced intercompany sales process. I also want to show you where, you where to get the best practice test cases. So it's in the accelerators area. You see test script Cloud ALM. You download it, could import it into Cloud ALM. And in a few months, it could also be directly imported, much easier than today. And then you can also check how does the process look like. So uh, here. You could even make it a bit larger to see what happens here. And here we see, OK, it's an intercompany sales. So like an order to cash, it has a great sales order. It has some other aspects that could be steep, skipped. And here we have the delivery, perform picking, and so on. And this has, of course, typically impact on my testing. And my idea is now we create uh, we use this one, create sales order, and this one to be tested by two different persons. And that is the demo I want to provide then uh, when 
orchestrating the tests accordingly. So I go back to my test case, just two times back, then I'm back in the test case. I start to rename that test case so I can say, okay, either I use this uh, uh, scope ID that is coming from the best practice and they uh, say, okay, I will focus now on the first test case, so I'm giving a uh, numbering. And at the end, I say, okay, this focus on sales order and save it. And now I go to the structure and now there's a very efficient way to unscope this. So you can use your keys, the space key and the cursor key and you just go down and here sales order we need, one down and put all the other things away so it's quite fast. You don't, oh, this one I skipped. Let's do that and that and that. So save. And also if I decide that's what I want, I can directly set it to prepared. Save again. And now I do a copy. Rename it. And of course, using a numbering, because I don't have the sequences yet, so I put the naming convention and take it into the right order. I go again to the structure tab. I look, here is my create sales order, and go here, unscope it. These are two optional steps I want to skip. Now we add the delivery and the picking and the post goods issue, and that's what I want to have in the second test case. And let's look on the content, directly updated, create delivery with all the test actions, the perform picking with all the test actions. That's good for me. Let's set it to prepared and save it. That's all I need to do to prepare. So if the process is larger, I of course need to do that maybe eight times to split it up, but it's efficient. Some minutes uh, could be done uh, that. And now we can start with the test planning. In a test plan, I want to create a complete new, call it end-to-end. -end. Test plan, just for demo reason. Of course, it could be more meaningful. And now I go to my assigned test cases. As I have a meaningful Naming convention, again, I can use this three-digit scope ID and already see, okay, I exactly these test cases are part of that. I can use them directly, but also to show that you can also use one test plan for several end-to-end -end tests, I now not search for a single scope ID, but I use the term end-to-end, -end. and here you see now with that, entering that, all the processes that are linked to the end-to-end -end process scope and related test cases are now here. I can add additional filters, like I only want to use manual test cases, and I only want to use test cases that are prepared. I can watch this, can scroll down. I see, okay, this is unsorted. Why? Uh, it's still here unsorted, but I can use the sorting button. And then I see an order that my advanced in the company sales process is in there with two test cases I just created. And of course, I have prepared some other test cases like the lead to cash process with the lead to opportunity. Uh, with one step and a second step, so we split it up, the same for opportunity to quote, to have an opportunity to assign these test cases to different testers, and the same for a make-to-stock process. So also here we included that, and then I can also say here, select all, that's new, this button, before you need to have the shift key and so on. Uh, and you can select them, put them into one test plan. You can assign it, finally. And now, I want to assign the tester. And I just use Christina and myself, 
as tester. Just start to type and then you find them, create it. And that's all I need to do, of course, for all the test cases, if I know the names and so on, can do this within this app. And if I'm done, I go here and say my test plan is ready for testing. So I set it to in testing. And now the question is, how does it look like now in test execution? And here I want to go back to our famous overview page. And as you remember, this was the preparation part. I have another view that is called my test execution. You might know this term from Solution Manager. And of course, you can use similar things uh, also in Cloud ALM. We don't have an app yet but we have the capabilities to filter here also my test activities, my test cases, according to several entities, like I can filter on the scope. I can filter on all test cases that are assigned to me as a user. But in this case, I want to focus testing on the test plan I just created, so I select the related test plan. And now I see here, okay, there is no manual, uh, failed manual test, that's obvious. In future, this is something that is still missing, the test plan filter here will also have impact on the defects, that you see only defects that are created as part of this test plan, that is something that should come in a few weeks. But important now for the execution is, you just jump in to this test plan with all the test cases that are relevant. And you see, okay, the test cases are sorted in the right way. Even without test sequences, but having the naming convention in place, then you, can, is, you are able to uh, find your test cases and bring them in the right order. Of course, currently it's still possible that you start with the second one, even the first one is not completed, but of course, uh, some intelligence need also be come from the test set at this point of time. Later on, we want also provide some strict governance that the test coordinator can really uh, control. This is the right sequence and you cannot start the second one uh, before the first one has been completed. But uh, that's the capability we have today. What you could also do, because here we have still a lot of test cases. If you use the tags to classify your test cases, you can also now use this group of tags, tag group, according you, to your end-to-end -end processes, like lead to cache. I select this one. And many people ask me, where are the test packages gone to? This is a use case typically has been used in Solution Manager for test packages. You can use the tags and you can filter them here. Later on, also in a later uh, shipment, we want to also provide tags as filters in the test plan assignment of test cases. But currently you could also work like this. Then you have now all test cases related to the lead to cache sorted in the right way. If you have assigned the tester, you can also see that here. And of course, if you are only interested in your own test cases, you will see them here and can focus on that. In this case, I didn't uh, assign it for this, but for the end to end for this one, I will get a test case, the one I assigned to me, yeah. So um, that's more or less from the demo perspective, but we have some more to show. Uh, this is just a summary of what I just did for your reference. So if you later have the slides, you can see exactly the sequence how we went through. So you can use that a kind of uh, best practice or reference to go for. And again, the analytics can be used here also to check from a process perspective, what is the progress from a test plan perspective. That means for an end-to-end -end test, you can also see focusing these progress charts on a certain test plan. You can use the tags filter 
and then you see all the test cases that are related to your end-to-end -end process and see the progress from a test case point of view, test status, but also the test activities. We have a second tab here that you also can compare large test cases with hundreds of test actions or a small one with maybe 10 test actions that you have also a feeling, okay, there is real progress and not all statuses are now in progress, but you don't know see within a test case what has already been passed and what not. And the same for the traceability apps, especially in this example from a solution process traceability, you have always a view on the end-to-end -end process that is here one entry like the lead to cash and you see test preparation has been completed. So in the preparation, this is an important information and also test execution and a defect uh, resolution. These are KPIs you need to control per process and that's the capabilities we have here. Now we come to the future. So in the context of the end-to-end -end testing, we have certain features in our pipeline. One of most demanded is copy of test plans because it's quite fast to create such a test plan. But of course, I also want to reuse and save maybe 15 minutes. I needed to do this. If I have a good naming convention, it's fast. But uh, again, copy of test plans, I know it's highly demanded feature. The same for test sequences. Here, in the first iteration, we most likely will focus on providing just the sequence like we currently do with a naming convention, but that you in, can do in the test plan app. You can do the sorting on your own without having a naming convention in place. That's our would be our first step. And later on, uh, as mentioned, with a strict sequence. Also, the test uh, case filter when assigning them to a test plan. That is something we have also in the pipeline and I uh, want to provide later. And here, of course, scope, solution process. The upcoming integration with the process hierarchy will be an important filter entry. The tags, priority, and owner of the test case. That is something we plan here. And also further outlook that is not just related to end-to-end -end testing. Uh, here, the updated roadmap, and uh, maybe just uh, looking on what we have done this year already. So the major part this year was refactoring, where you as a customer or partner will not see anything within Cloud ALM that has improved, but in the below data model and all the, the, the back-end uh, logic, we needed to refactor to be able to be more flexible in future for our private and on-premise customers because we learned that public cloud is most close to standard and test cases were fixed connected to the processes, but customer maybe want to copy the processes and author it, uh, adding some additional steps. And it was not possible so far to then reuse an existing test case, assign it to the custom process. That is something that will be an uh, upcoming feature that allows you then. But the, the prerequisite was the refactoring, and that took really a lot of time. The next step, what we did uh, in parallel is we provided also the variant management in test preparation and execution that allows you then for either a test author and a test coordinator to focus on certain things, like I'm only interested in manual tests or automated tests or in certain scopes and, and um, these kind of filters and also table settings can now be stored. We have also introduced uh, two new attributes. One is the priority that formerly has been managed by tags, but the problem was with tags you have just one filter. You cannot combine priority, for instance, with uh, functional area ID or something else, uh, the, the tag filter is quite limited. And therefore, we have introduced the most important attributes like priority and owner. And as mentioned, we want to also integrate with the process hierarchy where the team is currently working on. And for next year, we plan to have references for test cases that allows you to provide links to your test case, for instance, for test data in an Excel sheet you have on a SharePoint. 
and you provide it in the same context of your test case. So you can uh, separate the test data from the test case, so it's not needed to update the test case again and again if you have the same test case but in a different company code or something like that, you just can attach a different Excel sheet, link it to this um, test case, and then you can retest it. Integration to libraries, you had a lot of about the new library concept. So here we plan to integrate with the solution activities. That is some prerequisite for a solution manager, selective data transfer, where you could also assign test cases to a step process step and the corresponding entity is called solution activity in Cloud ALM. The same for applications, which is executable and interfaces. That we de cons could consume those test cases and assign it during the selective data transfer to the right place. And this whole thing together with a mass upload will then allow either to import the test cases from solution manager or from a other source, or also direct single test case upload using the best practice test cases without the need to create them before then download, upload, which is quite cumbersome at this point of time. This we want to solve with this feature, mass import, but also single test case upload in a much more convenient way. Simple test sequences, as I mentioned, reassignment of test cases. That means you can change the assignment of test cases to another process, to another scope, uh, also diagram, copy of test plans, integration with features. We have on the roadmap that you also can check within the feature, are related tests successful before you deploy to production. Test evidence we want to provide. That is something we want also leverage the evidence flag that already exists in Solution Manager bring that to Cloud ALM during selective data transfer, and we also provide, plan to provide the logic during testing that whenever the test evidence flag is set, the uh, entry of an evidence screenshot or some statements that this is mandatory. Document-based test cases is important that whenever we import test documents from Solution Manager to Cloud ALM with the Documents app, we then want also to leverage to make this available in test preparation and also orchestrate them in the right way. Mass editing of test cases and so on. So we have a huge pipeline. We have a huge over 100 customer influence requests for test management. And, uh, but also we have shipped uh, some of them. So some of them are already solved. But we know uh, there's a lot of things ahead and uh, therefore um, we are always uh, interested in feedback, also to balance the right sequence of shipment of those things. And some of them we have constraints because there are technical dependencies and so on. But for some of them, we can also reflect customer input. Roadmap, you can see the latest updates and of course, hashtag ALM Summit. And now we come to questions, not? 10 seconds. Oh, time over. <laughs> <laughs> if, there are, if there are any questions, I will be down there the whole evening. So come to me or Christina. Maybe also me, yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you.